Hello and welcome to Matthew Reads, I guess. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the outrage, and I'm going to be 100% honest, I'm not entirely sure how to, you know, pronounce this last name. I've been pronouncing it as Hussey, I'm going to apologise now if that is incorrect, but I'm going to be talking about the outrage by William Hussey. But wow, what a moment. I will never forget. So like, recently I had to clear like a huge chunk, like, of my shelf because as it turns out, like, I have that shelf behind me and I also have, like, a second shelf, like, just outside. Turns out I'd filled both of them up completely. And then because I have no self-control and, you know, I found a gift card to a certain major UK book retailer, I ended up buying another five books and this was one of them. Anyway, I am gonna mention now, like, the first page of this book is a content warning, and I wrote them down on my notes. So, um, okay, there's a content warning about how this book is set in an alternate UK where there was a far-right government takeover, and consequently, because of that, the in like, this book includes mentions of homophobia, homophobic language, mention of ethnic cleansing, self-harm, mention of suicide, and scenes of violence. That is a lot. And, like, because the book mentions it, like, right on the first page, I wanted to mention it early on in this video as well. Just so, if that's, like, I'm not gonna really be talking about them, like, those sorts of things in this video, so you don't have to worry about that. But I am just gonna say, if that is something that you don't really want to be reading about, it's probably worth giving this book a miss just on that. But anyway, to, like, continue this sort of video as, like, any other normal video, so the blurb, I always start with the blurb, I don't know why I always start with the blurb, I just do. But this blurb mentions that, you know, in this, you know, alternate UK there are rules for everything, including what to say, what to think, who to hate and who to love. And then that Gabriel, our protagonist, is a natural born rule breaker, and that his biggest crime is being gay, and that his secret must be like, kept safe, not only to keep himself safe, but to keep his boyfriend Eric safe, because his boyfriend is essentially, his boyfriend is the son of the chief of police, essentially. But also in this world, there's something called degenerate investigations, which is basically the police. So yeah, there's plenty, like, immediate setup for conflict and drama there. You know, the rules, you know, being anti-gay, essentially, and the fact that, you know, the main character is gay and has a boyfriend. So what I will say is this book, like, kicks into the action pretty much immediately because, you know, in this book queer people are referred to as degenerates. And, like, there's this girl in Gabriel's school, like, right from the outset, who gets, like, a monetary fine because her hair is slightly too short and it's of a length that suggests degeneracy. Let's go, lesbians, let's go! So, like, this world, like, that's been set up is so extreme that, like, women aren't even allowed to have short hair. But then there's, like, this group that essentially does this, like, yearly sweep of the school to, as it says in the book, scare the shit out of the kids. And then, while this is happening, Gabriel has, like, a banned disc, which is just, like, a banned movie, in his bag. So, like, a bunch of the other kids in his class, like, they sort of, like, rally together, band together, distract, like, the people doing the search, so that Gabriel can, like, drop the movie into an air vent and hide it. And, like, there are so many things in, like, this version of England in the book that are just, like, so violently policed. Like... Later in the book, it get like, we as the reader get told that, like, the government that's in power essentially abolished elections, so that, like, unless there was a revolution, that was the only way they were going to lose power. And I will say one of, if not the most interesting thing in this book was, like, seeing the state that the country was in. Because, like, to put it nicely, it's a shit all now, it, in the book at least. You could make claims for the real one to be in a shit all as well, but... But, like, from the descriptions that I got, like, the UK was essentially war-torn. <laughs> like, there were a bunch of places that had been, like, decimated. And since, like, the country had, like, shut down on, like, shut out opposing voices, like, there were loads of people that are, like, on rations, people, like, working in factories, and then there were just, like, a whole chunks of the country that had just been, like, totally abandoned. It's also mentioned that, like, the country barely has healthcare and, like, men rarely live beyond 50, which was, like, wild? And then also the protectorate, which is essentially what England calls itself in this book. Like, they shut phone lines off at night, like, and because they're trying to, like, shut out all opposing voices, like, 
people don't have mobile phones, they have no internet, and barely anyone has a car as well. And then, like, to touch on that shutting out opposing voices thing again, like, the government has essentially, like, banned so many movies and books that they, you know, deem as bad. And then, like, the main character, Gabriel, like, him and his boyfriend, they've essentially started this group called the Rebels, whose base is just, like, in an abandoned library in an abandoned part of town. Like, where they meet and like they're they do a very light rebellion like their form of rebellion is like getting together and watching like banned movies which we find out are literally just things like star wars indiana jones love simon basically movies that inspire people and queer movies like essentially movies about rebelling and standing up for yourself things like that have been banned and then as for Gabriel himself, I feel like he is, like, the typical rebel protagonist. Like, even if he's not, like, overwhelmingly, you know, physically fit, he's, like, got a smart mouth like the rebels usually do. Like, he's always talking back against the officials and, like, picking fights. So throughout the story, we're given, like, flashbacks as to how Gabriel and Eric got together. And the story is basically that Eric, he moves to the school friendless, and then Gabriel takes an interest in him. And then it turns out they're both a little fruity. Mmm. <laughs> this is definitely fruity. And then obviously, like, Gabriel is very opposed to, like, how the world is run, like, under Eric's father. And then, like, Eric sort of slowly breaks down in the sense that he is against that as well. Also, we also learn the origins of, like, Eric and Gabriel's nicknames for each other, which are... Monkey for Gabriel and Scarecrow for Eric. I'm glad we got the origins in the flashbacks because like as sweet as it is for like characters to have like pet names and nicknames Like it would have been a bit weird like just not being told why they call each other that Because like otherwise it would have just been them like calling each other weird names for no reason <laughs> And in the flashbacks we also get like information about Eric's father and like Why he is the way he is essentially and like since he is essentially the chief of police, he's like a massive looming antagonist over everything, basically. And therefore he is the villain of the series. <laughs> he is the villain of the season. But then we learn why he is the way he is, which I really appreciate. Because I feel like sometimes in books, the villain is given like no redeeming quality. So like, we have no reason to root for them to like do anything to like do something charlie so like the fact that we learned like a little bit about eric's father when the final confrontation of the book happened like it made the ending more bittersweet than it could have been like had we not learned anything but i say that bittersweet in a good way also i realize i haven't really talked about the plot very much or at all and that's mainly because, like, when I was doing my research for this book, this book only came out in May of 2021, so as of me recording this, it's been out for, like, two months. And I don't want to, like, really spoil it for anyone, because it's a really good book. But, I mean, it's a rebellion book, so you can vaguely, you know, you can sort of gauge what happens. But let me say, I thought this book was wild. <laughs> Like, I very much enjoyed it, and, you know, having read Metro 2033 before this, a book that was, like, rife with unnecessary detail and, like, exposition dumps. The outrage... She felt almost the opposite of that, the opposite of Metro 2033, and I mean that in the sense that there was detail in the book, but only where it needed to be. It wasn't, like, lousy and lethargic with essentially too much. Like, there was enough detail that I could make out what was happening or what places looked like. But, like, not too much that it, like, just said, Hello, this is what everything looks like. You may not form your own images of it. Like, it wasn't like that. Also, there was, like, a lot of action, particularly in the, like, the second half of this book. So I appreciated, like, the fact that there wasn't, you know, just a cesspool, a steaming garbage bag of, like, unnecessary detail. I appreciated that, that like, that wasn't in this book. And now for, like, my final point, I'm gonna make a really weird analogy about this book. And I'm gonna need y'all to, like, stick with me on it, so... 
You know how in certain video games, there are sections where, like, you're sliding down a chute of water, and then at the end of that chute of water, you break out into a massive open pool? That's what this book felt like. Like, as I was reading it, I was going down the chute, and then the end of the book was that massive open pool. And I know that's a really weird way of describing it, but I can't think of any way else of describing it. So there you go. And yeah, that's a really weird way to end this. Um, my final thought is I really enjoyed this book, and you know, I definitely recommend giving it a read so long as those, like, content warnings at the beginning, like, aren't enough to put you off. So, um, yeah, go read The Outrage by William Hussey. It's really good, like I said. <laughs> Is it in contention for one of my favourite books of the year? It is definitely up there, but I'm not 100% certain just yet. Anyway, that's it. Okay, bye.